everybody. Hi, Jinx. As soon as I start talking, the dog comes running in here. Because <laughs> he's everybody's best good buddy. <laughs> you want to come say hi? Come here. Come here. Oh, Rusty. Say hi. Hi, Jinx. What? <laughs> no, 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 stop. <laughs> so, yeah, um, here we are. We are gonna have a nice, relaxed stream. Um, we are going to make falafel waffles, um, which I've never done before, but I've always wanted to do. Woo! Big up, big up, big up. Thank you, Jinx. Big up, big up, big up. Thank you for the host. Wrong button. There we go. Chat is open. Let me know if you have trouble hearing the music. I can turn it up. Um, if it's fine, that's fine. <laughs> I mainly have it for you guys because sometimes. It feels like a little, um, a little too much time goes by between steps where I don't say anything. So it was really for you. <laughs> so if it doesn't make you happy, you let me know and I'll fix it. But yeah, so, um, I got, well, okay, so the idea for falafel waffles is not new. People have been doing it for a very long time. But I have never made them before. So the recipe that I came up with was inspired by this book. It's not overpowering you. Cool. Um, so the No Meat Athlete Cookbook has a recipe for just regular chickpea waffles in it. Um, and I thought to myself, that would probably taste really good if it had um, falafel seasonings in it. So that's kind of where I'm going with that. So I came up with this recipe that we're gonna try out. And the only thing that I didn't write down in here was how much water to put in it. So I'm just gonna look that up real quick. I think it's one and a half cups. But yeah, um, and then I'm just gonna top them with some sauteed vegetables. I already have cut. Um, MVP made some food the other day and we had extra veggies. So, I was going to use them to make a curry, but I just, I haven't done it yet. So, I thought this would be a good, good time to use them up. Where are you? 178. I passed it. Yes, one and a half cups of water. One and a half cups of water. Okay. Let me get... I always forget to have a pen. There we go. And we're gonna do some olive oil in there. Okay. So, yeah. I'm ready. You guys ready? We're gonna have a good time. Whew, excuse me. I actually just woke up from a nap. Whoops. Did you wanna sit up here, Mimar? The cat is eyeballing my stool. You can sit there, Mimi. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna start by getting all of the ingredients together. There she is. <laughs> she really is so pretty. Maybe we can reposition the other camera as a cat cam. <laughs> Hi, 
We got a pile of shoes and the box for the air fryer back there. There you go. How's that? The dog is so jealous right now. <laughs> okay, you guys, so I'm gonna put two cups of chickpea flour in my bowl. This will happen a lot <laughs> with Bob's red milk flour. It just has a tendency to do that. So Jinx, I know you just got home. Do you have a plan for what you're gonna have for dinner tonight? Tonight, uh, these waffles are actually gonna be pretty good timing because MVP and I are gonna be streaming Lotro on her channel at six o'clock. So, I'm just gonna be able to do it like just in time. Hi. Loop, 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 loop. Um, for the stream, for her stream, we're going to be playing um, our characters on Landra Ball. Okay, so I need a teaspoon of baking powder. And this is where my falafel seasonings come into play. I need cumin and the coriander, wherever the heck it is back here. Oh, right here. So I'm just going to shake some of the red pepper in here. And then I'm gonna do half a teaspoon of coriander. And a teaspoon of cumin. Jinx says, I'm going to try to listen while driving home, but as I go through the mountains, I might lose you for a second. Oh, that's okay. I was just wondering what you guys were going to have for dinner tonight. Are you going to be online for um, our Lotro stream? MVP and I are going to be playing on Landra Ball. Okay. So I have all my spices. I just need salt. Somewhere. Salt, salt, salt. There we go. And I'm just going to do a quarter teaspoon. I really hope these turn out good because it sounds like it's really like substantial without being too rich. I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for food that's filling, but not like going to make me feel like I'm going to die after I eat it. I actually made a soup that was falafel flavored one time, um, but I haven't made it again. It was really good though. Oh, hey, look, that's a butt cam. That's fun. Okay. Jinx might do stuffed shells because it's easy. Well, that's cool. I've made those before, it's pretty good. Oh. I always like to whisk my pancakes and waffles so there's no clumps. Okay, so I've got my dry ingredients ready. So, I'm gonna work on my savory mix in. Oh, hi, Lee! Thanks for stopping by. Um, I just started. We're making falafel waffles, which I've never done before, but I've seen many times. We have a sous chef today. This is Mia. She's very curious. Good kitty. You hope you have enough sauce though. I always aspired to be one of those people who has like a pantry full of things. 
for when I forget to do stuff, but when I forget to buy things or, you know, but I've just never been, I've never gotten used to doing that. Like I try to have like cans of chili and chips and things in the freezer too, but I have such a limited space to store things that I usually end up just getting what we need every week. Okay, so I'm going to put a quarter cup of sun-dried tomatoes in here. And I'm just going to chop them. So I am going to be adding some, some vegetables to this inside of the batter too, not just on top. Um, I'm going to avoid adding a lot because I don't want the moisture from them to really negatively affect the consistency of the batter while it's cooking. We'll see what happens. And this is a huge stem, so we're going to make sure we don't eat that. Oops. I actually really like falafel um, and tabbouleh, and I haven't really made it at all this summer. I, I got some mixes to make them uh, last week or the week before. I think it might have been on Friday, actually. And they were not very good. Um... They were like organic, healthy versions, and I think that was the problem. Like, they weren't actually made by an ethnic food company. So they were very bitter. I wasn't very pleased with them. How's your day going so far, Lee? I worked today and I thought about rescheduling the stream for tomorrow because I was pretty tired. We were down like three people today and uh, which is fine but I felt good while I was at work but as soon as I got home the cat started to purr <laughs> and I'm just really susceptible to that that white noise syndrome just makes me like really really sleepy. I think Mia is taking a bath right now. Oh, and I did turn on my waffle maker earlier, you guys, and it is working fine. Had a problem where I forgot you're not just supposed to submerge appliances, and it was in there for a little while. Because I made, I tried to make paleo waffles last summer, I think, and they got, it was coconut flour, and they got so stuck to the waffle iron, uh, I didn't know how I was going to get it all cleaned off. So, I mean, <laughs> submerging it did work, but I was scared to use it for a really long time. And I don't think I've used it since then, but I turned it on, it heated up, there wasn't any burning smells. When I saw this recipe, um, or when I saw these recipes being made, I thought I really wanted to try it because... Hi! What are you talking about? What? Mom? Hmm? What? Yeah. I love you. Um, a very long time ago, I had a cookbook with a recipe in it for cornmeal pancakes. And it was topped with a homemade salsa and goat cheese. It was so good. And then I was like, really on board <laughs> with the um, savory waffle and pancake bandwagon. In fact, uh, when MVP and I went to Vermont last weekend, we were going to go get crepes. They had a place in... 
Hanover, which is right over the Vermont New Hampshire border, um, that does crepes, and they had a vegan crepe on the menu. But we were late um, for them closing. They closed at three thirty on a Sunday. So I couldn't have them. It was very sad. Very sad. I think this will be enough. It's I think it's maybe a scant quarter of a cup. But I really don't feel like cutting any more tomatoes. Okay. So, I need a quarter of a cup of fresh parsley. Which isn't going to be a whole lot. And then I'll just top the finished... Waffles with more fresh parsley. Oop, cat's gone. <laughs> we'll just put this back. <sighs> I'm just tired. Maybe I need more kombucha. I hope all you guys had a good week. Tomorrow, MVP and I are going to another baseball game. Which will be fun. The last one we were supposed to go to got rained out. MVP has been going by herself. Though. She has a theory about when she goes to these baseball games, though. The dog has a tendency to get really stressed out. And... She's, she thinks she's noticed a pattern that some days he isn't feeling well, like he won't eat breakfast, and his tummy makes a really weird noise. She thinks it's when, like, the morning after she goes to a baseball game by herself, like, the, uh, the poor dog is really nervous without her coming home at the regular time, and, uh, makes himself sick, sick to his stomach. Same thing, I mean, it happened to him again this morning when she went last night. Which I feel really bad about, because, I mean, the two of us hung out, and we played around in the yard. We had fun snuggling on the couch. We watched a lot of TV. But I guess it still stressed him out too much. Poor little guy. This parsley smells really, really good. I did buy it today. I have a tendency to not buy parsley unless I'm going to use it the day of because it goes bad so fast in your refrigerator. There, I think that's good. And then the rest will be for on top. On top of my waffles. Let's see if Rusty wants one of these twig stems. Come here, buddy. You want one of these? It'll help your breath. Yummy. <laughs> okay. 
the music still on? Too quiet. Skip. All right. So I am going to do a quarter cup of onion and then two cloves of garlic as well. garlic just is so relaxing sometimes I don't know it's like one of those little little tasks that you don't think about until you're doing it some people it drives you crazy but I don't know I just I like it I feel like it's rewarding I don't know why but that is how I feel Hopefully this garlic cooks enough in the waffle. I don't know if you guys have ever had raw garlic before, but it's extremely spicy. Back in the day, MVP and I used to be part of one of those um, vlogging clubs. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever saw Five Awesome Girls, but it was like that. Um, and we were all... Harry Potter music fans. So we dubbed ourselves the Wiz Rocketeers. I know it's really nerdy. But we had uh, dares occasionally, and one of them was MVP was dared to eat a clove of raw garlic. So she knows firsthand just how spicy it is. It never fails. Whenever you try to do something neat, it gets really messy. At least for me. I don't know if that happens for you guys. Okay, just a little bit more. And then we'll start warming up the waffle iron. So an update on the donuts from the other day. They're still really delicious. My only feedback at the moment is that they're a little sticky. So it's my new goal to find a new glaze or frosting recipe that I can use the next time that I make donuts. But I actually really like them. I really like the texture of the baked donuts, which I don't usually like. I remembered um, when I was making them that the, the bakery that MVP and I went to in Portland, um, what's it called? 
holy donut. Their donuts are actually baked. Like they're a yeasted donut and it has potato, potato flour in it, but they're a baked donut instead of a fried donut. Which is, seems very surprising to me. But they were extremely delicious. Okay. Get rid of my scraps here. Come on. Sorry. <laughs> when you've got too little space, you have to end up putting things in alternative homes. Ooh, that's still a little hot. Okay. So. Don't need that at the moment here. Oh, you can't really see it. There we go. Okay. All right, so I'm going to add a tablespoon of olive oil. and one and a half cups of water. Okay. smells really good. Okay. So to scoop it in there, I am going to use this one cup measure, but I'm going to eyeball about a half a cup. Um, with this waffle iron, that's about how much fits in there at one time. So that's my plan. Let me scooch some of this stuff out of the way and get started on my veggies too. So I've got some peppers and broccoli in here. I think I'm going to grab some other stuff. I know I have avocado, so I'm definitely gonna chop that and put it on top. But I think I might also use some of the zucchini. Sorry for the alerts if you heard it. I don't, I don't need to know about that, thank you. Oh my God. Windows is always trying to be helpful, and it's not helpful. Not at all. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so I've had a ton of zucchini from my zucchini plants outside. So I think I'm gonna put some of that in there too. Look at this funky looking zucchini, homegrown. In fact, I had so much of it, um, I knew that I would have way too much. Oh, is that a cable? Hi, cable. <laughs> I was uh, just talking about my homegrown vegetables. So I had so much zucchini that I knew I wasn't going to be able to use it all right now. So I dehydrated it <laughs> in the dehydrator. So this was a huge zucchini and then a little zucchini. And I already have two more little zucchini that I have to use. What are you doing? Mia? Can you maybe not try to get into boxes while I'm on the stream? Come on, no, this one's filled with styrofoam. Would you like to play with a bag instead? Here you go. <laughs> There you go, you play with bag. Love you. I think I'm gonna get rid of this parsley for now. Meemer! All right, waffle maker says it's ready. Nom 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 zucchini, yeah, that's right. So, um, assuming that I'm not still painting my cabinets on Monday, Monday is supposed to be the zucchini bread apocalypse. Um, so that basically means I was going to make a ton of zucchini bread, which is still possible. I think to make zucchini bread, you only like use a half a cup per loaf. So I do have another one this size, so that could possibly make two loaves. Um, but if not, I have all of that <laughs> dehydrated kind. Okay, so I still need, I need um, some oil for this guy in case these stick. Hello, elbow. Okay. All right, good. See, look at what happened. This was a lot softer when I first mixed it up, but the baking powder has helped solidify it a little bit. I think I need a tiny bit more. Okay. We're just gonna close it and see what happens. Okay, Cable, enjoy your tea. I'll be here. Okay, um, I got too much stuff. Oh, this is what happens. Don't tell her I said this, but MVP was right. We never would have survived in a tiny house. <laughs> Rusty, zucchini butt for you. Excuse me. Take it, bud. Ugh. Rusty loves zucchini. Loves, loves, loves it. I'm really, really excited to redo my kitchen, you guys. Really, really. MVP and I are going to attempt to install some recessed lighting at some point. Um, so.
so the kitchen is more evenly lit up. Okay. I'm gonna also put some salt on these to caramelize everything. Mmm, that smells good. And we're just gonna let that sit for a little bit. Um, 442. With waffles, you wanna try to make sure that you wait like five to seven minutes for everything before you try to open it up. If you try to open up the waffle maker before the waffles are done, it's just gonna like split and you're gonna have waffle on one side and waffle on the other side and then you're gonna be really sad and you're gonna have to try to squish them back together with peanut butter or something. Which I have done. Whoops. <laughs> Has this ever happened to you? <laughs> My goodness. Come on, avocado. WTF. Guess it's not quite, quite ripe yet. It was still softish. I have already had a half, a half an avocado today, but I really, really want one on these savory ass waffles. Yes, it will make a mess. More than once. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> Stop, just stop. Don't. <laughs> so now the question becomes, how do I get the rest of this out? So my guess is that I'm going to do the thing with the knife and twist it, and then the rest of the avocado is going to come with it, just like the other, other side. So let's see. Yep. What a jerk. <laughs> Dude. Add a tude. Cable, have you ever made savory waffles before? I was thinking about technology earlier and how much it has improved food. Like the air fryer thing. It's just pretty cool. MVP was telling me that she made, um, she, we bought a bag of the hash browns like frozen crispy crown tater tot circular potato delicious thing um and she just cooked them in the air fryer instead of in the oven and she said it was so much better because they were crispy instead of like partially crispy and i was really tempted to do that when i got home today for a snack but i just fell asleep instead whoops
All right, it's probably been enough time. Let's see. You've made sweet potato waffles? That sounds really yummy. So this looks pretty good. What do you think? It's crispy. Let me poke it with a knife and make sure that it's cooked all the way through. Seems pretty freaking good. Okay. We're gonna make a stack of done waffles. Hmm. Fork it is. Whoops. This is the fun part, you guys, where you get to burn yourself trying to get the waffle out of the waffle iron. There we go. Oh, yeah. All right, so I think it needs, like, a few more minutes on the next one. And a little bit more oil. Okay, so it's 448, so 455, we should check it again. Okay. And this looks freaking great. You see this? <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna leave these unseasoned, you guys. Because sometimes veggies are really, really good like that. And I'm gonna taste this by itself to see what it tastes like. That's pretty good. Mmm. So, Cables, this one is an Oster. We got it as a gift. I'm actually gonna turn it up to the max. This is good, you guys. It's like cornbread, but it had you can taste the cumin and the coriander. The parsley is not super overwhelming. No, it'll be really good with the hummus and the. Other stuff on top. Yummy. Mm-mm. Hello again, Jinx. So, we've made one waffle so far. It's actually really delicious. I'm really glad because a lot of times gluten-free waffles just kind of fall apart. Or they get stuck to the pan real bad. But this looks really good. And I'm, I'm gonna need to trim this parsley again, so we're gonna have to move some stuff around here. Yummy, yummy! This is wicked yummy! Actually, I had a conversation with somebody at work today about how I sing everything. I think, uh, I think the song went, na 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 backstock, na 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 backstock, na 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 backstock. I don't know. <laughs> I was doing backstock. I'm sure that somebody else somewhere in the history of retail has also sung that song. I mean, as humans, we're not that original, right? 
Singing does make everything better, Cables. I agree. I just have um, a work environment that is comfortable with people doing it. <laughs> like, in front of each other. Before, uh, anywhere else that I've worked, if I had started singing something, I would have been the only one doing it. Like, MVP and I sing songs to the dog and the cats all the time. Like, that's just who we are as people. I don't know if it's because we're nerds, <laughs> but I've never worked anywhere else where people sing the same way. Because I'm not the only one who does it. It just makes things more fun, I think. <laughs> I like your song, Cable. Oh, my coworkers need to do their job. This is my favorite song to sing. Yep, that's a good song. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. So last year, my gardening escapades didn't go very well. Um, I did have some herbs. I had basil and oregano, I think. Both uh, the oregano died over the winter, so I had to get some more. And um, yeah, as far as my vegetable garden went, the only things that I got off of it were cherry tomatoes and slicing tomatoes. And so far this year, I've gotten four or five cucumbers and four or five zucchini. I got some, some beans. All right, I can show you those too. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the pole beans don't get very much light, unfortunately. So this is all I got from them. I'm going to be putting them in a curry at some point. I just went ahead and froze them. And then for my raspberries, this is what I got this year. Last year I got maybe five. So if you think about it, I've tripled <laughs> my yield this year. And then hopefully next year I'll have twice as many as this. Maybe three or four times. And I can actually make something with them, substantial. I think, I'm thinking with this I'm just going to make a cake and put some in there and on top or something like that. But I'm not sure. Cable says my garden isn't doing too good at the moment because of how much rain and droughts we've had. Hopefully next year is better. Yes, I agree. Um, next year, MVP and I are going to hopefully buy a, um, a fun outdoor growing system called a veggie pod. Look at that. That's much better. Right? Came right off. Cool. We saw them in Vermont, and it was really, really awesome. Um, and they're actually very affordable. It's a containment system. It's a raised bed that has a, a water wicking, wicking water feeding system. But you can also hook it up to the hose. Um, it just cuts down on the amount of time or the amount of times that you need to water it. Um, the smallest one is only a, a few hundred bucks. We're thinking about getting a medium-sized one. And the reason is because um, the growing season here is very different. Okay, so 5.02. We need to check again. Um, but yeah, I basically couldn't put anything in the ground until mid to late June. Um, and none of my seedlings sprouted because it was so cold outside. So I ended up having to buy everything, um, and then by the time I was able to put them in the ground, um, I mean, summer had already started, but there was just so much rain. Last year, um, the reason I didn't get any zucchini was because the thunderstorms just knocked all of the flowers off of my zucchini plant, and it kept trying and trying, but none of the zucchini ever grew. So I'm hoping this helps a little bit. But I'm also going to start trying to make, um, excuse me, try to grow other things like the containment unit is, it has like a foot worth of dirt that you can put in it. 
So I'm going to try carrots and potatoes just for fun. <laughs> Not because they're prolific or anything like that, but I'd also like to have um, area in there that I can do cilantro year round because cilantro does just fine in a cold environment so long as it gets a little bit of warmth. Um, the cilantro that I had planted um, last year kept regrowing. Hi, Sagara. But it kept regrowing over the winter. Like it would snow and then the snow would melt and you'd see cilantro in there. I mean, it was still a little ratty, but I feel like if it was in a nice little enclosure protected from the elements, it might actually grow really well year round. So that's my goal. <laughs> Yay! Cookie, 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 cookie. <laughs> Jinx Pumpkin has redeemed her beans so that I can eat a cookie. And here it is. I'm eating a cookie. It's a lemony Oreo and it's really good. Thank you so much. And now Rusty wants a cookie too. C is for cookie and it's also for Clem. The Clem Ken Cookie Show. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Now it's Rusty's turn. All right, Rusty. Bubby. Come over here. <laughs> this is the best I can do, guys. Here you go. Where are you going? You got more. Come back over here. Come here. Are you choking? <laughs> he just, like, barfed it out and ate it again off the floor. Classic dog move. Here you go. Chew it. Rusty! Chew! I'm not giving the rest of this to you unless you chew it. I'm gonna have to break it into teeny tiny pieces. Good lord, dog. Did you chew it? Okay. Can you come over here for the last one so people can see you? Come here. What's that? <laughs> I thought I had that set so only one person can do it an hour. Apparently I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> Shit. You guys, I have to eat dinner soon. No, stop! <laughs> Alright, I've got two more cookies. <laughs> They're really good. And I anticipated this happening, so that's why I got the thin, the thin one. <laughs> Thanks, guys! Mm -mm. The cookie redeem is for me, not for you. Me. This is my stream, not MVP stream. Yours is a bonus. Yes, Oreos are vegan, Sargeris. Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. All right, so this is the last waffle. And then I'm gonna assemble it and eat it. So I need this guy, cause I'm just gonna scrape the bowl directly into there. Oh, 
careful. The waffle iron is hot. Um, Cable, I hope that you like the donuts. They are very, very delicious. I'm not sure how I would suggest storing them because they do get very sticky. Maybe if you're not planning on eating all nine of them tomorrow, you could only dip or drizzle the ones that you're going to eat right then in the glaze and then wait to glaze the other ones until you eat them. That might be your best option because they got wicked sticky. Okay, so at 5.09 is when we take in your belly. Yes, that's a good place to keep them. I had one today. So I have them right now on a plate um, in the refrigerator. And I just kind of scooped it off with my fork and ate it with, on a plate. But it was really good still. It was They're really delicious. They're just all stuck together. I have to look up um, a different way to make a glaze so that it doesn't just turn into a pool, a pool of sugar. Maybe a frosting would be better. But they are really, really tasty. You will definitely enjoy it. Cover them in powdered sugar. That could work too. You could always um, do like a wash on them. Maybe just some, some oil or a simple syrup and then do powdered sugar on them. The reason I say that is because they're not fried. So it, they might not stick. The powdered sugar might not stick to them as well because they're baked. Were you planning on baking them? I'm not sure how well these ones would do fried because um, it is specifically a baked. No, it was really good. Sargrif is onto something with that. The glaze was very, very good. <laughs> You guys, did you see my shirt? This is the shirt that MVP was talking about the other day. No, it's good. Baking it, the, the texture is really, really great. I liked the texture a lot. I had two people, I worked with two people that were like, I have an apron on at work, right? So this is, this is all you could see of the white tree. And they came up to me and they were like, are you wearing a white tree of Gondor shirt? And I'm like, yes, yes I am. <laughs> No, the consistency would not have been good for frying. I was just curious. I didn't know what her plan was because, I mean, everybody's so creative in the kitchen. I just, yeah. They were, they're a really good texture. Thank you, Sagareth. I was really excited to wear it. I have to wear a sweater um, at work, though, because it's so cold in there, so you couldn't see the back that says Lotro and stuff, but... I don't know, it's just like the little tendrils and the little stars, people just who know Lord of the Rings just recognized it. Yes, let me tell you about Lord of the Rings Online! On the official Lotro stream cooking shows. Yeah, I don't know about that. There's not a whole lot that I, I could do <laughs> because it's all going to be stuff I can't eat. You should do that, Cables. Um, I'm sure there's even a book out there that lists all the food. Mia, can you please stop? Please stop. Please stop. I don't care. Thank you. Vegan lumbus, yes. I'm sure I could make vegan lumbus, but what I want to eat it is the question. Hey, what did I just say? No. Can you say hi to everybody on the stream again? She says, nobody paying attention to me, so I make lots of noise. Yes. Hi. Are you jealous because you didn't get treats? Hmm? Hmm? What? Now she's not talking to me. I'm always ruining her fun. And now I have to wash my hands, because she's gross. Hmm. 
That's my baby. Yeah, you, you're my baby. She's been very, very good recently. She's very affectionate. She likes to do things with the people. She's just very antisocial. Like, she only likes her mommies, and that's it. She hasn't tried to attack the dog recently, so that's good. So, we're almost ready. We got one more minute. I want to make sure I have the the hot off of the the oven one. <laughs> what? What are you doing? Huh? Mm -hmm. Mia. Me. Yes, you're a good girl. Can you stand up? Can you stand up? You don't want to do any tricks? Come on. Come on. No. <laughs> All right. It is time. Assemblage time. Okay, need my hummus. And yes, I know it's kind of funny topping um, a chickpea waffle with more chickpeas, <laughs> but they're different flavor profiles. So this is the hummus I got at the store today. I haven't, I'm not sure if I've tried it before. I typically just go with the least expensive hummus that's available and they were all the same price, so I'm like, I, this was the first one I picked up, so I just went with that one. No, you don't get hummus. <laughs> this is what it would be like. I'm pretty sure this is exactly what it would be like if people were here from the audience trying to get me to let them eat my food. <laughs> They're literally watching me go back and forth, getting all my ingredients and things. Okay. Oh, hi, Stelina. You're just in time for the, the final, final part of the stream, the putting the meal together and eating it portion. So I've got my falafel waffle and I put hummus on top. Um, maple syrup is vegan, Sargerith, but I'm making savory waffles. That's what I wanted to do. I'm gonna put my chopped parsley on here and then some of my cooked vegetables which is a mix of two types of peppers, a little bit of broccoli, and my zucchini. And then I have avocado. Okay. This is it. I've already tried the waffle part and it's really tasty, so we'll try it all together. <laughs> Sarkaris says, just FYI, well, for his information, I've learned that I can be vegan if I eat only Oreos and maple syrup. <laughs> You're, I agree with Kibble, it sounds perfectly healthy to me. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Oh yeah, all right. This is good stuff. Mm 
<laughs> we got silly now. Oreos are vegan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is wicked good, you guys. Oh my gosh. So good. It's like eating a spicy falafel. It's not as strong with the parsley. But it's it's just great. Yeah, it's really, really good. So I'm definitely going to post the recipe for this in my Discord when I'm done. And then, um, I'll take, I'll put one together for MVP and I'll take a nice picture to put in there as well. This is just delicious. Actually, they used to, um, but actually it wasn't cream, it was, um, lard. And when snack companies stopped using lard and things, they switched to, like, shortening, like, vegetable shortening, and that's when they became vegan-friendly. It wasn't intentional, I'm sure, but we just caught on and <laughs> decided we should let everybody know about that. And most of the flavorings in them are artificial, too. So. No animal products. Yeah, this is really good. Alright, you gotta move. You gotta move. I'm gonna sit here. Thank you. All right. So that's the stream, you guys. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you all for redeeming your beans so that I could eat delicious Oreo cookies. Uh, just in case you wanted a verbal recap, the recipe for today. I've got waffle in my teeth. <laughs> so the waffle was two cups chickpea flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of cumin, a few dashes of red pepper flakes. There was a quarter cup of fresh parsley, a quarter cup of chopped red onion, two cloves of minced garlic, a quarter teaspoon salt, a half a teaspoon of coriander, and a quarter tea or a quarter cup of sun-dried tomatoes chopped. And then I added one and a half cups of water and a tablespoon of olive oil. And then I just cooked them according to the waffle iron instructions. And then for the vegetables, I just sauteed some vegetables. <laughs> I didn't add any seasonings or anything. So it was a combination of red and green peppers, a little bit of broccoli, and some zucchini. And I put a little bit of salt on there. And then I just put hummus and parsley and the veggies on top. And it is really, really, really good. <laughs> the only thing that I could suggest is maybe um, a soft cheese. Or you could maybe do like a parmesan or something like that on there too. So... Those are my suggestions. So, um, yeah, let's see if there's any other fun people on. So, let's see. We're gonna go to, we're gonna go to belly.io. Yes, thank you guys so much for coming. I'm gonna see if there's anybody on Belly that I want to raid. And we're not gonna roll the credits because nothing happened other than the cookies. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shh, hey, shush. Okay, so we are going to raid, I, I'm not familiar with her, but she's doing D&D &D night baking. Hello? Uh -huh, thank you for the bits, Jinx. Thank you. <laughs> Puppies for me. I need a cup. I need a cup for all my bits, but I'm not sure in which area to put them. Maybe over here? That way? Anyway. Um, so we're going to raid, 
uh, Femme Chef SR1 because she's doing Dungeons and Dragons night baking mini lemon tarts and mini milk tea tarts. So, yes, <laughs> Femme Chef SR1. <laughs> I don't know who she is, but pineapples and pirates seem to be a theme on her stream. So, <laughs> what? Are you familiar with uh, that streamer? How's <laughs> Delina? She's awesome? Okay. <laughs> Alright, well, we're gonna go over there and do that. So, I don't have anything fun to say. If you're a sub, you could do the donut O's if you want. You don't have to. But thank you guys so much for coming. Um, I really appreciate it. And I will be back on Monday, I think? There's parsley stuck to my phone. Um... No, Tuesday the 28th at 4 o'clock will be the Zucchini Bread Apocalypse. Alright? Thank you guys. I will catch you later. Bye.